There is absolutely a need to design makeup specifically for black women. It was almost as if black women didn't exist to the beauty industry. And if you can't find your shade, you're buying one, two, three, four shades. A white woman's probably just buying one. If I'm at the top of your shade range, how am I like one of your darkest colors? That's not real. You don't have a strategy unless you have a strategy that looks at and appreciates African American women. Everyone wants to be woke. Everybody wants the woke stamp of approval, but you have to do the work. What white women have access to for makeup versus what black women have access to, the shades are definitely different. It's just been so hard to figure out how to walk into a space with makeup and figure out what's going to look neutral on you because it's not just the foundation, it's also the lip colors. It's how everything is played together for your skin tone. It was almost as if black women didn't exist to the beauty industry. And so as a black woman, naturally I'm frustrated because I don't see myself, I don't see representation of people who look like me, my sister, my mother, and I'm questioning it. I'm questioning everything about the beauty industry, the media, and ultimately my self-worth. As I've grown up and I've grown in this industry, I think it's been really interesting to see that I'm on the fairer side of things when it comes to the spectrum, the beautiful spectrum of black women. And if I can't even find something, or if I'm at the top of your, you know, your shade range, how am I like one of your darkest colors? That's not real. I look back at photos from like prom or like big dances and I definitely don't look amazing. Even thinking back to finding like a makeup artist, if I wanted to find someone, like we'd go to the mall and like you'd go to the makeup counters, but also it's like a white woman's likely doing your makeup. So they're kind of guessing and they're not really getting color theory. Maybe the shades are there, but they're not blending it correctly. One thing I will say, as a girl who doesn't come in Ulta a lot, I don't feel overwhelmed. I feel very satisfied that they have like MAC, Mario Badescu. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited! Black women are amazing in that we spend about $233 million a year total in the cosmetic industry category. And that's about 11% of the total industry. So considering that we make up 14% of the population and we're spending about 11% for this category, it's pretty significant. Right now, I am wearing foundation, concealer, blush, probably highlighter, eyeshadow, mascara, eyeliner, lip liner, and lipstick. So I'd say probably close to maybe like 250 to $300 worth of makeup on my face. I actually don't know exactly every single thing that's on my face, but there's a lot of foundation, powder, concealer, fake eyelashes, lip gloss, lipstick, all the things. But I'm sure there's at least like seven or eight hundred dollars worth of products on my face right now. I'm obsessed with everything Fenty. Uh, so I'm using that, I'm using Bobbi Brown, and I'm also, and that's just makeup. We haven't even gone to the skincare. I would say the average woman on the conservative side probably spends $100 a month on a product that she's seen and really loves. So that's like $1,200 a year, maybe $1,500 a year if you're buying something a little extra too. I think for women of color, it's maybe can go even higher. I feel that black women are buying makeup more than anyone else because we have to do more trial and error to find products that actually look good on us. When it comes to lipsticks, African Americans are spending about 15% of all of the lipsticks that are purchased. So that brings us to about $43 million worth of lipstick that blacks are buying every year. It, it's a tough battle. So I personally probably spent $300 trying to find new colors that worked on me. Ultimately, I decided I don't like them. And maybe I don't like nudes because I felt like I never was able to find my perfect nude. And I think a lot of black women are in that similar boat where it's like, I don't do lipstick at all because I can't find this color that works on me. So we gravitated towards lip gloss. Like I remember lip gloss being such a huge thing for our community. And now that lipstick has taken over, we're still in that like, I'm willing to play with lipstick a little bit, but I'm still a gloss girl. 
Essence did a study about kind of black women and their spending patterns as it relates to cosmetics, and they said that it's kind of like nine times more than what people buy. Black women buy up to 80% more makeup, because think about it, if you can't find your shade, you're buying one, two, three, four shades. A white woman's probably just buying one. So it's like you're basically spending four times more on foundation. Same thing with a lipstick, you can't find your nude, so you're mixing them together. So ultimately you're becoming kind of like this chemist of sorts, just blending things together in hopes for the one shade that doesn't quite exist. Because we are such a wide ver variety and range of skin tones and hair textures and all of that, we're constantly trying to concoct things for our needs. And so we have to buy more. Black women for years have been underserved, but it's not even just black women. When you look at beauty campaigns, it's like you never see plus size women, you never see Indian women, you never see Asian women. It's only really been white women, and so white women have largely become the standard. And it's the standard that unfortunately, black women have tried to aspire to. And, and we're seeing like with plastic surgery and you know just following makeup and beauty trends over the years, we've always tried to go after that European standard that will ultimately never achieve. I think I probably didn't notice the injustices until later on. My mom was a huge fashion fair fan. I think for her demographic and her age group, that was a pivotal moment because it's like, if I think I'm struggling, like, can you imagine like what like my 65 year old mom was experiencing or even my grandmother, there's nothing for them. Makeup isn't just for one person anymore, and the person that wears it isn't going to look like everyone else. And everyone doesn't want to achieve the same thing from what they put on. There is absolutely a need to design makeup specifically for black women. I don't want my skin to be ashy in color. I don't want it to be gray or too yellow or too orange. And when you get it right, I'm gonna stick with you forever. And brand loyalty is what any company is going after. The reality is my nude is not the same as even my mother's nude. My mother's nude is certainly not the same nude as my sister's nude. So even within our very small community, like our family, we all require very different things. And I think it's the responsibility of the beauty industry and just like a financial responsibility if you want your actual company to grow. And we're seeing that happen a little bit right now to cater to that sort of woman. It just doesn't make sense to me because it's like a what this is like for a darker complexion but this blush is so light it's not gonna look good on me there's just people on the border who aren't thinking about this so they're not thinking what does this look like across an array of skin tones they're only thinking is this a pretty color you know does this last long but there's so many other factors for example you know african-american women tend to have oilier skin which is great because we have less wrinkles in the end but things are sliding off of me there's so many other factors other than a beautiful shade that women of color have to think about i mean everything could take a looking at at this point because historically we haven't been considered. So we know that there's holes in every single product range. And I think obviously that goes beyond foundation. And it's not only a good thing to do morally and ethically, it's just good business. You don't have a strategy unless you have a strategy that looks at and appreciates African-American women. Because here's the interesting stat that I love. In black households, African-American women control the lion's share of all of our money. African-American women influence the decision of where to buy the house, do we buy a house, what car are we going to buy. And so when people are trying to engage for growth or people are trying to sell products or services, there's no way you can do it without really understanding and being intentional about black women. A lot of companies will put out something for black people and just put a jingle to it and say, they'll eat it up, like they'll love this. But foundation is, isn't something that you can just like put a song to and expect that women will buy. It's like black women need proof. Because we haven't trusted this industry for so long, we need to know that these colors are gonna work for us. I'm just curious as to why that inclusion diversity piece has not been a 
the forefront of their, their storytelling. Hi, white women, we have all of these shades for you. They're so amazing. Meanwhile, black women are struggling to find their shades and, but you have those products for them, but it's like, we're not gonna pay the advertising and the marketing money to tell them that we have that. We want all the white women in the world to wear what we have. And then Fenty came along and said, we have everything for everyone, but we're gonna lead with the fact that we have it for you know the darker skinned women and like blew it out of the water. And then everyone was like, oh, wait, wait, we have it too. And it's like, well, why didn't you say that? Like, why aren't we a part of the conversation from the get go? Like we shouldn't be an afterthought, especially when you consider how much money we spend. I think the market for black women was ignored because you would then have to acknowledge that black women are beautiful. And so if you started producing foundation for black women, that meant that black women had to be the forefront of a campaign. You would then have to put marketing dollars into you know, this black female. Four years ago, the retail world was completely ignoring black women. But now with the rise of the Fenty Beauties of the world, and they made like $72 million their first month. And so today, it's super easy to get in front of a retailer. They're like, okay, you're gonna bring me black women? All right, cool, come on. Five years ago, they were like, uh, do black women need lipstick? Do black women need foundation? So it's, it's interesting to see it play out. And while I'm happy that inclusion is like, at the forefront, I'm hoping that it's sincerely not a trend. We see these, you know, kind of capsule collections from some of the makeup brands, some, some of the drugstore brands, you know, that'll be focused around a Janelle Monet, a Queen Latifah, a Lupita. We, as a community, we get so excited about that type of effort. You know, I'm like, oh, Janelle Monet is on it. I'm going to buy me five, <laughs> you know, but you know, I might fall in love with a shade in that capsule collection and it might become my favorite shade and when I go back three months to replace it, it's gone. You know, and that, you know, can erode trust in that particular brand. I think it's unfortunate that people are just hopping on the bandwagon without thinking about the formulation and who they're serving. I think diversity and inclusion is amazing and important, but you also have to question why are these brands so interested in you automatically? It can't just be the Fenty effect. Right now, I think it's the best possible time to be a black woman. And I think we're, we're in this place where we're, we're reuniting and we're starting to understand our power and our influence on every single part of culture. If you've ever wanted to like start a beauty brand or you know contribute to this conversation, now's the time. Look at Supercent. She made like a million dollars in 90 minutes. Like, what is that? She's not part of Estee Lauder or L'Oreal or any of those big corporations. She's a black woman who found a hole in the market of finding color cosmetics that worked for our skin tones, created them, and sold them to our community and made a million dollars in less time than I'm sitting here on this couch. Like, it's crazy. Like, that is the power, not only of our community, but of this moment right now in beauty. I, I think the industry is waking up, um, and I think that they need to start to take notice, and it's just better for their bottom line, if not just morally and ethically, and everyone wants to be woke. Everybody wants the woke stamp of approval, but you have to do the work.